For this video, I wanted to review the idea I had to use dual receivers in order to power my updated Crescendo CS speaker system. So fronts, I have the 3009s. Uh, I have these infinitesimal fours. The uh, 3006s are wired in parallel for the front speakers. Again, the 3009. On the rear, I have some 3008s, which are some very large speakers for the rears. Uh, I do have the CS Video as a center rear, and again, the 3008s. Uh, behind the sofa there is a large SSW212 Infinity subwoofer. It's very nice. It shakes the couch for sure. But I do want to get more out of these larger speakers, and the... CS or the RXV3300 that I had just isn't quite enough power to drive all of them in, especially in full range. So what I had mentioned before is I was using my subwoofer to its full potential by uh, just uh, sending the 90 hertz frequencies to that and letting the RXV3300 power the frequencies above 90 hertz and my speakers but again i'd rather have a little more use out of those two 10 inch woofers on my 3009 so what i decided to do was try to distribute the load by adding this rx v1 which i pretty much got for free but uh it's just an idea i had i think eventually i'll probably step it up to the yamaha rx v9 but for now i wanted to give this a try so what I ran into was, I can just power it on. You see how just the RXV3300 came on? Uh, I'd actually added some tape over the, the V1 because trying to power these on at the same time is actually causing too much of a load on my breakers. So I tripped my 15 amp breaker uh, occasionally when I would try to power them on together. But power them on separately, it's no big deal on the breaker. They run fine i can turn them up but this the startup that end rush of current uh, can trip the breaker so uh, the only real time i would use the uh, remote for the rxv one on the top is to power on so in this case it's no big deal i just have to walk over every so often uh, so you can see i have the uh the the bottom one is kind of my primary receiver for all the controls it's an eight channel stereo now where the yamaha rx v1 says the six channel input and i'll get into that in a minute just wanted to show you real quick it's just a mess but uh, got a big rat's nest behind it you can kind of see i don't have hdmi inputs on these receivers i run a lot of stuff to my my monitor uh, DVD players, Blu-ray players, uh, I guess also Apple TV and the, uh, you know, several components there that are all plugged in. I think if I go to the RX V9, I'll clean a lot of that up. But the point I guess I was trying to make back here was I've got some speaker terminals you can kind of see. I have to show you in the manual, but... There's quite a bit going on for both receivers as far as the speaker inputs. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So as far as the setup goes, these are the two manuals. This is the back of the receiver. This is the RXV3300. So in order to hook these up as dual receivers, uh, really what I'm doing is using the main ends. And in one case, I'm using the six channel input. So for the main speakers, I talked about this in another video, I used the, the main outs uh, from the RXV3300, go to the main ends of the RXV1. Uh, that gives me, basically, RXV1 is driving the top half of that CS3009 speaker. So it's basically a three-way speaker, those, those top three components. Uh, and then the bottom two is driven still by the RXV3300. So the amp remains on in this one. I wire speaker A to the bottom set of posts 
on the CS3009 and the top set of posts I wire to the A's on the RXV3009. Uh, for the center channel speaker, originally I had that hooked up to the CSV3300 center channel. Uh, in order to lighten the load to really get the power distributed between these two receivers, I decided to move the center channel up to the RXV1. Uh, so in order to do that, I come out of the center channel uh, outs on the CSV3300 to the center channel in on the RXV1 and then I just wire the speaker center speaker channels to these two CS30 uh, or sorry CS3006 uh, speakers. The only trick here is I have these in parallel so uh, off this post here for the uh, center channel speaker, I have two sets of wire and a banana plug. But what I do on the speakers themselves, they are set up for bi amping or bi wiring. Uh, so I do run a set to the highs and the lows, so I'll remove the shorting straps on that. And then I just do a jumper from the high terminals over to the high terminals and the low terminals over to low terminals. So. Actually, in theory, I guess I have a bi-wired parallel set up on the center channel speakers. All right, so then the, the other thing that I had that kind of distributed the power that I wanted to talk about was these infinitesimal uh, four speakers. Uh, initially, the CSV3300, it has an effect speaker or effect amp. And all that really does is provide 25 watts, and it's not even a, a, a 20 to 20 kilohertz rated RMS. It's, I think, rated at 1 kilohertz, but it's only 25 watts. I could tell a big difference in the sound, uh, especially in the 8-channel stereo. just wasn't enough to power those speakers, even though they are just a small two-way. So what I did to get increased power, and because I took advantage of this additional amp is that I can wire the pre-outs for the front effect speakers. So that's basically an out from the CSV, or sorry, the RX V3300. Uh, in this case, I'm out of ends. So I used up my main ends, I used up my center end, but I do have this six channel input. So since I've already used up center and mains with the main ends, those really aren't available, but I do have the surround channel as an input. So what I'm gonna do is wire the outputs from the RXV3300, which were these effect outputs. Those signals I send to the input of the surround 6.1 channel inputs and now my front effect speakers are going to be wired off my rears so now i've just increased my power from 25 watts to 110 rated watts 20 to 20 kilohertz so doing that it was a huge difference in the sound i like that a lot so just in summary i think this is kind of a, a good way to maybe boost your power if you run into a situation where you're trying to drive very large speakers in a surround system. Uh, maybe not as good as going stepping up to the RXZ9, the big boy, uh, with 175 watts per channel. But in this case, I do have available headroom for the current. Uh, whenever it needs those high current, low impedance spikes. So, I guess in summary here, I've got my infinitesimal four. It's got those two speakers. The top half, those first three speakers on my CS3009s. And then the one, two, three, four, five, six components, the two speakers, center channels for... Uh, those are all being driven off the RX V1. So originally they were all on my CS or my RX V3300, but now I've kind of lightened the load. So I've got, if you just count the top half of this 
uh, CS3000 nine speakers is a speaker, which they basically are. Uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six speakers with one, two, three, four, five, uh, 10, uh, 16 individual components. Uh, I still have the center channel speakers set up in the small settings on my receiver. So I do have those set up to where only the frequencies above 90 hertz are sent to those. Um, but now my main speakers, I talked about by amping before, I have those set up to run as full range speakers. So I feel like I got enough power now to handle uh, that and I can tell the difference with the bass response. Uh, I feel like I got a little more uh, as far as the uh, front to rear bass uh, performance as long along with the left to right. So I got a bump in performance there for sure. Uh, going to the rear so the along with the uh, the bottom sets of woofers driven by the, the CS uh, or actually the uh, RX 3300, I have these uh, rear speakers, the center and the left and right. So that's basically, I've got, you could say five speakers if you count the front woofers. Uh, so that's four components plus another four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15 components along those five speakers. So it's a pretty good balance between the two receivers, I think. And uh, other than that, I can show you real quick how to do this with the menu set up. All right, just to review the settings. So again, uh, I guess I was gonna mention real quick is on this, I actually don't have uh, input for my mains and my, well, I actually for my center I do, but for my mains, you just kind of get lucky. If you got the receivers are pretty much balanced, uh, for if you go with the main ends, you're not gonna really have a, a volume or a gain setting to adjust those, but I like the balance that it has without that for the mains. But for the effect speakers, what I basically did is use the volume control, set it kind of where I liked it, which was minus 10, but, uh, overall, you can uh, have some settings here in this menu to uh, adjust your gains to where you need them. So I'll try to do this quick. Speaker set. You've got center, small. We talked about that. So the 90 hertz frequencies are diverted from those center speakers and they go to my subwoofer. Uh, now my mains are larges. Uh, so the full frequency range are going to the woofers and to the top half of my CS 3009s. Uh, the rear left and right speakers are set up at small, so frequencies below 90 hertz, again, are going to the subwoofer. Uh, the rear center, small, same thing. Bass, still, I only have the subwoofer handling the low frequency effects, and then all the 90 hertz and below frequencies from the speakers other than my mains and the front effect speakers they're yes but they're not being powered by that little uh 25 watt amp they're now being powered by the rx v1 uh, 110 watts per channel big difference there and main normal again not much there but that's the uh the dual amp method uh, hopefully that will help uh, if you run into an issue with not enough power to drive some big speakers. Again, I got into more detail before with the, the bi-amp video, but this one's mainly focused on the benefit of the dual receivers. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.